Now, the mayor of a town in a conservative area of Texas has become the first openly transgender official in the state. Jess Herbs issued an open letter on New Hope's website saying that transgender people have made great strides in the last few years. Society finally has a chance to see and learn about who we are, she wrote. Well, Jess Herbs joins us now from Dallas, and we are very grateful to have you here on the programme. Uh, I was reading your blog a little earlier where you announced uh, that you were transgender. How long... Have you actually wrestled with that? How long have you known? Well, I've known I was transgender since I was born. It's something that you just have your whole life. Um, if I was born, you know, in 1958, so for most of my life it was really an unknown thing. I thought I was the only person like this. It really wasn't until the advent of the Internet that I was able to do some research and realize that there are literally thousands and thousands, really millions of people like me, and that's when I started to understand exactly who I was. So um, I really started coming to terms with it as far as presenting and seeing if I could actually be the person I knew I was on the inside about eight years ago. It's small town. It's Texas, as I was saying there in the introduction, I guess rather conservative. So what, what has the response been like? The response has been overwhelmingly positive. It's just, it's been phenomenal. Um, you know, they've known me for a long time. I've been on the city council since 2003, and so they've known who I am as a person. They just never got to see what I thought, you know, I was supposed to be. They, just the looks. They know who I am. Um, and so because of that, I think they're like, well, all right, um, if that's who you are, that's great. Let's go about and do our business. And it, it, the response has been wonderful. Uh, I know that you encourage people to come along to those meetings and actually ask you questions. Have they done that? What sort of things have people actually asked you? Um, well, the last, the first meeting I had where I was actually just at the meeting was last Tuesday. Um, I had a little spot at the beginning for people to talk to and ask questions. It lasted maybe four minutes. Um, you know, okay, how long have you been this way? Your whole life, great, let's move on with business. So, um, I'll probably see a few more questions at the next meeting, but, um, right now the people here are just really more concerned with let's get things, you know, they're, they're concerned with city business. They're not concerned with, with who I am or how I present. You said in that blog, uh, I live my life now as a female. Uh, you make the point also that your family have been incredibly supportive. Uh, but, but how difficult for them uh, along that journey? Well, well, we'll start with my wife. Um, I told her about my feelings when we were dating, and this was 1978. So she's known all along. She's grown with me. She's learned about this. You know, there was never that surprise moment. It's never, ever been a secret between us. We just finally learned how it was. I waited until my daughters were out of high school, and um, I told my oldest daughter first. Uh, her response was almost immediately, oh, well, now everything makes sense. Um, and she just jumped on board right off the bat. My youngest daughter, uh, immediately on board, they, um, they make sure and tell all their friends, uh, their employers, you know, my dad is transgender, and they're very proud of me, and it's just been, you know, for me, that's been an amazing, amazing thing, because for years, I thought, if anybody other than my wife knew, that it would be, you know, basically a death sentence. I envisioned um, pitchforks and torches, something out of Young Frankenstein, but it's not been that way. People have just really, um, really been understanding, and it's, it's not been difficult on any of us. It's interesting because you, you started the interview saying that you thought you were on your own. You only learnt through uh, social media uh, more about it. When you look at this issue, it's exploded uh, in terms of the amount of attention it's getting, the change. Uh, that is almost a given. It, it, so how nervous are you when you have a president now like Donald Trump? Well, you know, I'm not nervous specifically for me. Um, uh, the president has not made really any anti-transgender or anti-LGBT statements. A lot of his administration has, so that makes me nervous. The only thing I'm really worried about is seeing the country um, go backwards. And as I said, I grew up in a small town um, very close to where I am now, Greenville, Texas. As a child, um, we had a sign downtown that said, Welcome to Greenville, the blackest land, the whitest people. As a child, I remember white, uh, water fountains that said, Whites only. My father was a dentist in town, the only one that would treat uh, black patients, and even he had to maintain a, a white waiting room and a black waiting room. I don't want to see us go back to that, not just yeah. between, 
you know, races, but between uh, LGBT people, there's a lot of people that want to... Go ahead. You talked about the, the, the wider administration. Sorry to cut across you, but, I mean, there were reports only last it's week okay. that they were drafting an executive order that perhaps might roll back some of the uh, progress on LGBT issues uh, of the last few years. Uh, that must have alarmed you when you heard that. It does. It does alarm me. Um, and unfortunately, you know, as a mayor in a small town, there's nothing I can do but sit back and watch what happens. I can come out and make my story known, and, and hopefully people will see me and go, oh, you know, transgender people can be normal. There's no reason to discriminate against them. Um, and, and I hope that doesn't go through. We have a pending bill here in the state of Texas, which is called the bathroom bill. It's really a bill that, that prevents local municipal, municipalities from um, issuing anti-LGBT anti, anti protection. Um, and obviously I'm very much against that and I'm becoming very active in the fight against that. So, yeah. you know, it's a new world, but um, we just have to stand up, speak our mind and just not be silent. Being silent is the, the worst thing we can do. Just a, a final thought then, because, uh, I mean, you only recently made this announcement. Uh, I just wonder if you've had any sort of discrimination since, and you also write this blog that uh, details your experiences and documents your experiences. What has surprised you most? What has amused you even the most? Well, the most surprising thing, as I said, has just been that everywhere I went where I was expecting resistance, I have not seen it. Everyone has treated me with respect. Uh, from people at restaurants to people on the street. I've not encountered any of the, the fears that we, you know, as transgender people have about going about our business. Um, and so that has been heartwarming and it is also, you know, it has helped me to, to be where I am. I, if I had not had such amazing support, if everybody hadn't been so wonderful, you know, I probably would have thought a few more times about this. But as it is, everybody's been great, so I'm moving forward. This is who I am. Um, there are thousands of us out there, and I hope this message helps other people like me stand up and, and let people know who they are. Well, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Jess, thank you so much for joining us here on today's program. Thanks so much for your time.